I'm John Soka. Our state government is broken, and if not fixed, North Carolina is heading for much tougher times, higher taxes, and possibly bankruptcy. So how do we fix it? First, we have to stop spending on projects we don't need and can't afford, like extravagant fishing piers and teapot museums. Secondly, we need to stop over-regulating our businesses. We need to use taxes for the intended purpose. In the last three years, the legislature siphoned off over $256 million from the Highway Trust Fund to pay for some of those projects we don't need and can't afford. Is it any wonder we have the highest gas tax in the Southeast? And finally, we need to cut taxes for businesses and individuals. Our tax rates are among the highest in the Southeast, and that penalizes all of us and makes us uncompetitive in attracting new businesses. This year, you have a choice to make. You can vote for my opponent for business as usual, or you can vote to reform state government and get things right. I'm John Soka. I'm asking for your vote to represent you and Raleigh as your next state representative. Hi, I'm Kurt Vincent, General Manager and Editor of the Bladen Journal. Welcome to the Saturday Show. My guest today is Ray Britt. He's the Bladen County Board of Elections Chairman. Thank you for joining us, Ray. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, for a midterm election, there seems to be a number of important decisions that voters are going to have to make on November 2nd. Probably the biggest uh, decision you'll have to make, and I can't blame County um, on the local issue, is probably our sheriff's race. That seems to be the um, the fuel that's, that's burning, you know, right now. Right. The fire's real hot, and both sides is working real hard, and uh, it's going to be very interesting. And, and, and I think that's going to be actually good for other candidates and other races because it's going to bring the people out. So when they vote for the sheriff, obviously they're the vote, so uh, the other people are going to benefit from that, the other candidates. Now, that sheriff's race in Bladen County is unusual for a number of reasons. Uh, first, uh, Prentice Benson is going to be facing his third election this year. Correct. And Billy Ward is going to be facing his first since he filed as an unaffiliated candidate. So he didn't have to go through that primary and runoff process. That's correct. Yeah. And uh, all that's going to make it really interesting. Right. Um, early voting started recently. And um, through the first few days, I've heard that quite a few voters have, have taken advantage of that. Have you got any numbers from the first early days? Uh, they haven't. I've got you some accurate numbers. Uh, you know, the post opened last Thursday. Uh, at this point, we have a total of 1,749 people that have cast their vote. A breakdown on that, if, if I may, uh, one-stop voting, which is the early voting, is 1,466. The absentee has been 281. Uh, plus adding to that two military requests uh, sent out and both have been returned, which gives you a grand total of 749. An inter a very interesting fact, um, thus far we've had 801 absentee requests. That is a high number and it will continue to grow. And we've had 281 at this point to be returned. You only count those, however, the ones that are returned. But with that request, um, you know, I'm sure we're setting uh, records again in Blaine County. Now you said there's been about 1,700 folks that have cast a ballot already in the first less than a week. How does that compare to past elections? I would say based on the general election, it's probably running about the same. I haven't actually looked at the numbers to compare that. Um, but we do a good job in Blaine County. Uh, when I say we, the board and our board members and our office staff, as well as the candidates. We take advantage, um, Blaine County does, of the early voting process. We are one of the leading counties in the state on percentages for getting the people out early to vote. Okay. Now, the general election is scheduled for November 2nd. Correct. And we're still two or three weeks away. Uh, what are the expectations as far as voter turnout for this midterm election? I would say for us in Blake County, it's very easy to see that we we probably have a 60% turnout, which that is a big number, sure uh, is. you know, because it's, it's real difficult to keep all your, your numbers up to date, uh, a lot of people off the books that shouldn't be on the books, and uh, it's a continuing everyday process. But to get 60%, that is a big number, and it could be more, you know, it's just, 
you never know. I mean, with everything that's going on, um, the turnout we know is going to be great. It's going to be great statewide because you've got a lot of uh, seats out there that's from right. the Congress to the Senate. Um, uh, it's going to be an interesting year. I think people are, are um, making their vote count this year, and I think you're going to see people voting that hasn't voted in a long time. Right. And that's a good thing because, you know, that's one of the rights, the few rights that we have left anymore. You know, you got two, in my opinion, that you should exercise. One, you set prices, you save your night, and one to vote. And, uh, and it's good that people do that. Right. And, and a lot of folks also put those two rights together. Um, That's right. Both yeah. with the, the second one in line. Um, now, we know about the sheriff's race in Blaine County, and that's going to bring some folks out. There are other races locally as well as the statewide and, and the federal races that are going to bring folks out. Uh, district attorney probably is one. You, and you got two good folks there. Um, I've, I've known both of them and met both of them and have an opportunity to meet both of them. Um, both of them are good guys. Uh, in, in my position, you know, you, you hope the better man wins. And um, hey, it's, um, it is what it is. And I think it's great for politics. It's good for all of us. Um, but, and I think, you know, more times, you know, I think it's, a, it's prevalent this day and time that people are wanting the right thing done for the people, regardless what the position is, whether it's the sheriff's race, the DA's race, the Congress race, the Senate's race, people are ready for people to win that are for the people. Somebody asked me, they said, you know, you've been a Democrat for years, you've been a Republican for years. And I said, you know, I'm a racist Republican today, but for the last 12 years, I've really been an independent because I'm on the board. I represent every voter in Bladen County. That is my job. I don't work for one party harder than the other party. Um, and that's something to be said about our board and every board that works for the elections. Our job is to do the right thing for every voter, regardless of our party or our personal interest. And, right. um, so I really serve as an independent. That brings up an interesting point. Now, in in the sheriff's race, Billy Ward is running as an unaffiliated candidate, and there are folks out there in the county who will vote straight ticket uh, ballots, but they would miss out uh, if they were to vote a straight Republican ticket, for, for example. Uh, Billy Ward wouldn't get that vote. Right. Uh, so they have to be careful. Well, and, and that's true, but you know, we live in a time, you know, and I'm sure, you know, you have the diehard Democrats, the diehard Republicans. And, uh, you know, and, and the Republican Party may not appreciate what I think to say, but look, you know, what's fair and what's right today? I go on the limb and say this, I don't care what party a person is. When you want to see our local government, our state government, and our federal government turn around, is when we, the American people, go vote, and we vote for the person that we think is going to help us locally, state, federally, nationally, that is the best for us, all of us, just like I've had to serve for 12 years, do the right thing for everybody regardless of what party they are. Do I cross lines? You better believe I do because I think I'm halfway intelligent and it's time to vote for the best person and get off. Well, I got to say this, you know, in my opinion, in Washington, that's one of the biggest problems. You got two parties up there, and it's like if one agrees this way, it's automatic. The other one's supposed to agree the other way, and they're spending half the time battling that we're supposed to disagree, and that's a waste of time. Right. Uh, let's just do the right thing regardless of the party, and I think then you're gonna find that we, the voter, then, and I put myself in that voting category, then, are, are gonna be happy with the process. And if we can accept and get beyond the mentality, well, I'm a Democrat or I'm a Republican. And, and I say that in all respect of all parties, but we have to get serious about this and forget this party stuff and vote for the people that's going to help us. Amen. I, I agree wholly. Uh, now, in wrapping this up, tell us how folks can take advantage of the early voting and, and when will polls be open on okay. November 2nd? I'm going to look at my notes here. I know I remember them all. It, we actually opened last Thursday. Locally, here in Elizabeth Town, you can vote any day from 8.30 to 5, um, Monday through Friday, at the library. 
Uh, on Saturday the 30th, you can vote at the library from 8.30 to 1. Remember that. That is the only Saturday that someone will be there. And that poll, again, is open May 35. Anybody in the county can actually go vote at that site. Okay. Now, we have East Arcadia at the Town Hall, 1 to 6, Monday through Friday. Dublin, the Lions Club building, 1 to 6, Monday through Friday. Bladenboro, 1 to 6, Monday through Friday at the um, uh, historical building. Now, on Saturday, those three precincts, on the 30th, keep in mind, the 30th, uh, from 9 to 1. And then we have election day, the 2nd of November, from 6.30 to 7.30. Great. And we obviously urge voters to get out and cast their ballots, and uh, that's, that's, the, that's the Democratic way. That's the, what we want as far as the board goes. Um, We've been excited this year. We've had a lot of controversy this year and uh, state investigations, this and that. And you know, that's a good thing because contrary to what a lot of people thought or believed, we have done the right thing. The candidates has proven to have done the right thing. Nothing has showed up that anybody's done anything wrong at this point, um, which I think that's great for Blaine County because we've got a lot of rap with WWAY and some other stations. And, and that's news, but the good news is we proved to be just an aggressive, strong county out there taking uh, liberties at hand, the legal process to do the um, get out the vote. Um, there again, I went on a limb. There's a lot of things I don't like about it, but hey, that's me. I, that doesn't mean I don't like it. My job is to enforce the rules and regulations and to protect those candidates and the voters, and we've done that. And, and we don't like that maybe sometimes as a personal deal because of what the outcome may uh, be or the way people may appear to perceive it, but it is legal. Right. And uh, that's the bottom line. Great. Well, Mr. Britt, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on the Saturday show. We urge you to get out and cast your ballot. And you all have a good week.